Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time, welcome. So this week I have a lot of things in my fridge, freezer, and pantry that I need to go through. So I am going to go to the store and pick up a few staples and then give you several recipes for what to do with all the things that are in the fridge and freezer. So let's go. Before we head to the store, I want to show you what I actually do every single week in order to save money on my grocery budget. I use this journal to keep track of all the inventory of things I have in my refrigerator, pantry, and freezer, then write down what I see is on sale, and then add that to my list and write my meal plan. So I'm going to go in my pantry and see what kind of dry ingredients I have, rice, quinoa, cornmeal, pasta, canned goods, anything that has a long shelf life. And then I'll go in my fridge and my freezer and see what kinds of meats I have frozen. I do have some chicken breast, some ground turkey, ground beef, and some fish, but I do want to go through the meats that I've already cooked and then chopped and froze. That's what I'm going to be mostly working on this week. I wrote down what I expect to spend as well, so that way I don't go over budget, and then we can actually head to the store. Here is my list today, so let's get shopping. Eggs are $1.49 a dozen. Let's get two dozen today. Next, we'll get some organic milk for $4.19. I'll be getting two half gallons. I'm actually gonna get the organic 2% because the dates are much better. These ones are till November, and these ones are only until the end of August. I need one container of heavy cream for $4.69. Then we need some unsalted butter for $3.19. We have a special event coming up, so we're gonna get two Lunchables for $2.99 each. We'll get one package of snacking cheese for $3.45. Then some Baby Bell cheese. I think these are around $3. Then we'll get one package here of the mild Italian chicken sausage for $3.49. I see that they have some pumpkin spice K-Cups here for $4.19 and also a maple pecan pie. These are one of my favorite chips and they're almost never here, so I am going to be getting these. These are the, um, the all-dressed version. And I think these might actually be on sale. Next, I need some tortilla chips. These are $1.99. Then some medium salsa for $2.19. They do have some really great organic options too, only for $2.69, so it's a really great price. 16.9 cents per ounce versus this one, which is 9.2 cents per ounce. So still more expensive, but still an awesome deal. They also have organic tortilla chips. These are $2.49, so also a really great deal on chips. And on the Aldi Savers today, they have 89 cent a pound grapes, $2.99 for kiwi, $2.89 for sweet corn. 10 cents for limes and 35 cents for eight ounces of jalapeno peppers. And we love these peanuts. We're gonna get some for $2.29, the dry roasted unsalted peanuts. Then we'll get a few bulbs of garlic for $1.77. I need to get a few avocados, they're 69 cents each today. Might as well get a couple of limes for 10 cents each. Next, we'll get some fresh broccoli. Here is everything that we're getting today. Let's go see what the total is. Here's everything now. We are paying $48.77 today. The first meal that I want to show you is one that I bought specific ingredients for. It's sort of a fall inspired dish because I have fall shaped pasta. So things that are shaped like pumpkins and leaves. So I thought it would be fun. I grabbed some mild chicken sausage, but you can use any Italian sausage that you like or a nice seasoned sausage. This time I just sliced it, but you can crumble it and just remove the casing and heat that in some oil until it's nice and brown and cooked through then remove that and set it aside and add some garlic just saute that till it's fragrant and then add the chicken broth or you can use vegetable broth either one works fine but just make sure that you're scraping the bottom of the pan to get all of that flavor that's stuck on the bottom get that all up then you can add the pasta I should have waited to add the pasta after I scraped the bottom of the pan then add some water and just make sure that the pasta is fully covered with the liquid you can add a little bit more liquid if you like then add some oregano and a little bit of pepper you can add salt if you like but the chicken broth I'm using has sodium in it so I didn't want to add any extra salt at this point you can always add salt later too just before serving if you feel like there's not enough 
you know, flavor, but that's totally up to you. So I'm going to bring that to a boil and then add my chopped broccoli on top. I'm not going to mix it. I'm just going to add my lid on top for a few minutes and then I'll stir every few minutes as well just to make sure that the pasta doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Then I'll put the lid back on and continue simmering until that pasta is completely cooked through. Give it another good stir. And again, it is going to stick to the bottom here and there. So just keep an eye on it and make sure that you're stirring it. Then I'll add in the heavy cream, it's just a little bit, and you can definitely skip that and do milk instead. Then I added some sun-dried tomatoes because I had those on hand, but if you had roasted red peppers, you could add that. Then add that sausage back in and some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of lemon juice. Now, a quick note about the sausage. You could skip that if you like. It will change the flavor quite a bit, but it would still be absolutely delicious. So if you're looking for a meatless meal, you can definitely change it up and try it a different way. So delicious though, you've gotta try this one. I highly recommend it. For breakfast, we had a Crenshaw melon that I harvested from the garden and finally got to slicing that. Then I have this buttermilk pancake mix in the pantry from Costco that I bought a few months ago. And every couple weeks I make waffles and pancakes and sometimes top it with cottage cheese a little bit of maple syrup and slivered almonds it's delightful and of course i harvested things from the garden jalapenos and tomatoes and zucchini and just a lot of tomatoes i froze most of them but i did use some in the recipes next i'm going to be using that zucchini just going to dice it and put it in some boiling water and i'm actually going to be making some ramen with this just instant ramen just with a little bit of extra flair with that zucchini and i know a lot of people don't have a garden to harvest so you can just grab whatever kind of veggies you have in the freezer cook those halfway through then add the noodles cook those the remaining way and then just add one out of the two packets of seasoning or just half a pack of seasoning because it's a lot of sodium so if you're looking to reduce the salt you can it tastes delicious that way as well and that's it for that one super easy lunch idea next we're just going to make a simple taco or burrito for dinner using some already cooked chicken i have in the freezer the trick to making the chicken taste delicious from the freezer is to actually saute it in a pan i don't think it tastes very good coming from the microwave but that's just me and it's up to you and then i added some taco seasoning just for a little bit of spice and then i added that to some warmed tortillas with any kind of veggies some greek yogurt or sour cream cheese all the fixins, and it was a really delicious and filling dinner. This next dinner idea is a sheet pan meal. I love sheet pan meals, they're so easy. So I'm just gonna line my sheet pan with some parchment and put my partially frozen chicken down with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and some paprika, but you can use any seasonings that you like. My chicken's partially frozen because I just did not thaw it all the way through. So you can use, you know, fully thawed chicken. It doesn't make a difference here, but if it's a little bit frozen, that's fine too. <laughs> that's just mom life for me. So then I'm just going to add all of those tomatoes. I just sliced them in half and put them with the cut side facing up. Added the grape tomatoes too because that's what I had on hand. But you can use any veggies that you have. You can do broccoli, carrots, squash. Add a little bit of oil. If it's the tomatoes, add a little bit of vinegar too. Some salt. I'm using sea salt, but any salt will work. And a little bit of pepper. Then we're just going to roast that at 425 for about 25 to 30 minutes until the chicken is 165 internally. And that's it. It's so easy. Just make sure you rest the chicken so the juices go back in. It's going to be really moist and delicious. Next is just my super easy dinner standby and it's just loaded nachos because you can use any meat you have on hand. Again I'm using some chicken that I cooked a couple weeks prior and chopped it and froze it and again I'm just going to cook that through in a saute pan but you can use the microwave if you like but I like to season this with some taco seasoning if I'm doing any kind of nacho or burrito with my meat but again you can use any kind of meat that you have on hand for this. I just chose chicken because that's what we have. Then I'll layer a plate or oven safe tray or something with just one layer of chips and then put my chicken or other meat on top then put some cheese and broil it just for about three minutes until the cheese gets melty and then i'll add all of my toppings i like to do salsa greek yogurt or sour cream i had some green onions from the garden and jalapenos from the garden some chopped tomatoes red onions and some cilantro so i just basically add anything if you have beans that would be great on this too black beans chili beans if you don't have meat, beans will work in place of that too. Super easy. I hope you enjoyed the recipes and maybe at least got a few ideas for dinner this week. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Give me a little thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.